Hi, and congratulations on your 2023 Nissan Qashqai SV. This is a great little vehicle, lots of features on it, lots of fun to drive, good on gas, but you already know that because that's why you bought it. We're gonna go through everything that you get with this vehicle, how to set everything up, and make sure that you're fully comfortable with it. And at the end of this, if you still have any questions, please don't hesitate to call, text, email, or stop into a Regan's Nissan here at 60 Baker Drive in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. We're gonna make sure that you're well looked after and get everything all set for you. Let's have a look. We're gonna start right here at the seven inch full color touchscreen display. This is where your radio is gonna show up. As we see right away, if I go into source, AM, FM, satellite radio, which we just saw there is free for the first three months after that. If you don't want it, don't do anything. It should just stop. CD player still exists in the Qashqai right there. Got our USB port down below. Bluetooth for audio. We have an auxiliary port down below as well. Apple CarPlay. And the one thing that you don't see here, which it does have, is the Android Auto. It's just never been connected to this one, but that one will show up there as well once you've connected it. You can set any of those for your audio. You can set your presets for whatever you like. Everything's really easy to do. To set a preset, you just press and hold. As soon as you hear that beep, it means it's set. It's nice and easy on that. To hook up a phone, you're gonna go into settings, connections, you're gonna say add new, and then you're looking for my cash Kai in the Bluetooth settings on your phone. Once you tap on that up here, it'll pop up with a number. You're gonna say pair on your phone once you've confirmed that it matches. If you have an Apple phone, you're gonna press allow. If you have an Android phone, you may need to press allow twice. But that's it, it's that simple. It will show up here to show that you are fully connected after that. And the easiest way back out of here, simply press the audio button on the side and it jumps all the way back out. Now if you wanna switch your clock up, go into settings and then clock, and then we're gonna set clock manually, change your clock however you think you need to, whether it's increase the time or increase the day. You see right there, nice and easy. It changes it there, also changes it up here. And again, once you're done, just press that audio button to jump right back out. Everything is really nicely laid out here. My backup camera, as soon as I put it in reverse, is gonna come up automatically. I can see green, yellow, and red hash marks right there. That is your distance indicators. We're gonna look at that a little bit later when we're going through some of the safety features because it does tie into that. Dual climate control down below here. So if you have a passenger who wants a different temperature, they can set their own temperature above or below yours. Once they hop out, all you gotta do is push that button. Everything resets back to the driver's side setting. Now what I encourage most customers to do is find a temperature that you're comfortable with, press the auto button, and then it will automatically adjust where your airflow is gonna go and what your fan speed is. It's going to do what it has to to get you up or down to that temperature as quickly as possible. Once you start to get closer to it, it will readjust each of those to maintain that temperature. Rear defrost is over here that will activate your heated side mirrors. And although you can control your fan here and the mode will control your air, where your airflow goes, if you want it on the windshield in a hurry, it does have its own button right there as well. Down below, we have our electronic parking brake and auto hold. So for the parking brake, all I gotta do is lift up. We'll see it lights up there and it shows up on the dash up here. To disengage it, you must have your foot on the brake and then push down. That will disengage your parking brake and then you're good to go. For the auto hold, I'm gonna buckle up here because this only works while you're buckled. We're gonna turn this on. Now right now there's nothing on the dash, but the moment I put us in drive, I can see right away, I have a new icon that has just shown up. It's green because my foot is fully on the brake. So now while I'm in drive, if I take my foot off of the brake, we're not moving. The moment I touch the gas, we're gonna start to move and that turns white. I'll put my foot all the way back on the brake and it turns green. So again, we're gonna go back, no foot on the brake. We are in reverse, we are not moving. As soon as I touch the gas, you can see on the backup camera over here, it's starting to move. Foot fully on the brake, it turns green again. Now, if you use this, it fully turns green and then you shift to park 
what we'll notice is it automatically engages your parking brake for you. It's a neat little feature right there. Your heated seats are right down here. You've got high, low, and in the center is off. We do have a sunroof with this one, which is really nice. Very easy to operate, just using my button here. So if I simply push forward on this, it will tilt it to vent. If I push back once, it'll close it. If I push back, it will open it so that it is open all the way there. And then I can push forward to close it. And anywhere along the way, if I push the button, it will stop it. As we move to our steering wheel, we can see some steering wheel mounted controls on both sides here. We're gonna start on the right side. Cruise control is gonna be turned on with this blue button here, but this is gonna do a whole lot more. So I'm gonna turn on my cruise up here. <clears throat> you can see lots of information shows up. It is gonna change the screen that I'm on. I'm gonna to wanna to go to the right a few screens or to the left a few screens to get back to where I was. Normally I like to have it set on the radio, so it all depends on where you want it set. <clears throat> this turns your cruise on. From there, you're gonna set your speed, which will show up right up here. Once you've set it, you can decrease it by tapping that a few times or increase it by tapping the resume button a few times. If you need to knock the cruise off, you can either tap the brake or hit the cancel button. <clears throat> You're still driving. The cruise is still technically turned on, but it's no longer set. Then you can hit the resume button to put it back. Now, with that said, it is adaptive cruise control. So you can see right now, it's currently set for one car length plus safe distance. This button right here is going to adjust that distance. Three, two, or one back up to three. One car length plus safe distance at 100 kilometers per hour is approximately two and a half car lengths between you and the vehicle ahead of you. So that's easily adjusted there. If for some reason you don't want adaptive cruise and you want normal cruise, we're gonna turn this back off. Now I'm gonna press and hold that same blue button and we see everything changes. And now it's just this little dial up here. This is your traditional cruise control. So if I turn it back on, if I simply press it, it's adaptive, but when I press and hold, it is traditional. This button here is gonna answer any calls or hang up at the end of a phone call. Well, this button here will allow me to make an outbound call. Now, the really neat thing with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, if you're connected through the USB port down below and your phone is set up for it, uh, Apple would use Siri, Android uses Hey Google. Press and hold that for two seconds and you'll hear the ding that you get with it. From there, you can have a full-blown text conversation without your hands ever leaving the wheel and without your eyes ever leaving the road. It's all by voice. You can tell it to read a text. You can tell it to text somebody. If it reads the text, at the end of it, it'll ask if you want to respond. Once you dictate your text, it'll, uh, it'll read it back to you and ask if you're ready to send or if you want to change it. So you can have an entire text conversation, keeping your eyes on the road and your hands on the wheel using voice to text through Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. On the left side of my wheel, I've got my volume and I've got buttons here. These buttons will take me through my presets or if I'm streaming music from my phone or a CD, these two buttons will also skip tracks. Now, if I'm on the radio screen up here, my OK button gives me full control of everything to do with my audio from over here with a push of my thumb, because by pressing the OK button, it will change the source of my audio. We can see as it cycles through the different options each time I press the button. We're gonna start back at the main screen here. So right now I have a trip odometer there's been a lot of idling done on this vehicle. In 56 hours and 59 minutes, it has gone 273.9 kilometers. So we're gonna see as we move across to our next screen, the fuel economy is running fairly high because of that. All of the idling has it running high. This will normally run one or two liters per 100 kilometers less than what we're seeing right here. Even better again on the highway. And all I'm doing to toggle between screens is my left and right arrows. 
So my next screen to the right is right there. But before we do that, whether we're on the trip odometer or the fuel economy, I'm gonna press the okay button. I can reset just the screen that I'm on, in this case, the trip odometer, or I can reset everything, which is what I'm gonna do. So now my trip odometer and my fuel economy have been fully reset. The audio screen we just saw, the adaptive cruise screen we had a look at to show the distance. And when you do get a car within range, it will put a picture of a car up ahead of those lines there as well. This is our safety features. So this car, this uh, SUV is fully equipped with Nissan's entire safety system. So in the front, you have automatic emergency braking with forward collision warning. So if you're driving down the road, car in front of you slammed on the brakes, there is a radar in the front of the vehicle that's gonna pick up the fact that you're now closing that gap really fast. Inside the vehicle, it is going to beep at you and it's gonna flash warning at the top of the screen here. <clears throat> that is your forward collision warning. If your foot does not go on the brake quick enough, it will start to apply the brakes for you to help avoid or minimize an oncoming collision. The moment your foot goes on the brake, that system turns off entirely because you are in control of your vehicle. That is your automatic emergency braking system. You have pedestrian detection, which works the exact same way, but faster, just because the car in front of you that hit the brake still has some forward momentum while the person who walked out in front of you does not. Your lane departure warning system is more of a highway feature, works at 60 kilometers an hour or faster. If you start to drift out of your lane, there's a camera in this housing up here that's used for your pedestrian detection, your lane departure warning, and your high beam assist. If that camera sees you're starting to drift out of your lane while doing 60 or higher, it's going to beep at you inside the vehicle to let you know that you are starting to come out of your lane. If you signal beforehand, it doesn't do anything. It knows you're intentionally coming out. Blind spot indicators are inside the vehicle, up on the A-frame pillar next to the mirrors. When you get part of a vehicle in your blind spot, whether it's the front end, the whole thing, or just the tail end of it, the indicator on that side will light up and stay lit up a dull orange. While that's lit up, so if this side is lit up and I signal to go left, this indicator is gonna to start to flash and it will beep at me inside. It's trying to tell me, have a look over my shoulder. There is something in my blind spot area. You do have rear cross traffic alert for when you're backing out of a parking spot. If there's something coming at you from either side within approximately two car lengths inside the vehicle, it will beep at you. And whichever side that's approaching you from, your blind spot indicator on that side will be flashing to let you know, hey, you've got something coming at you from this side. You can watch in your mirrors or in the backup camera when that happens and you'll see it go by. There's also rear sonar and rear emergency braking. So we're gonna come back over to our camera here. Now on the camera, I've got green, yellow, and red hash marks for distance indicators. As soon as whatever is behind me gets within the green, it's gonna slowly start to beep at me inside the Qashqai. The closer I get to that object, the faster the beeping will get. And if I get down near the red line with that object, it's gonna be almost a steady tone, but if you are still moving at that point, your Qashqai is going to fully apply the brakes to avoid contact about a foot and a half away from whatever is behind you. It's probably gonna scare the life out of you when it happens, because it doesn't sound wonderful, but it also means that you did not make contact with anything. It'll hold your brakes for about two seconds before it releases and slowly starts to move back again. So that is your rear emergency braking. The last thing that you do have is what's called high beam assist. So we're gonna cover our light sensor and force our lights on, as we can see down below here. Now, when I move to the high beam position, I see a green bullet shows up up here. That green bullet means that my high beams are now 100% automatic. That camera that we talked about in the windshield is gonna be looking for headlights or tail lights. If it does not see them, your high beams will come on and you'll still get the little blue light come on over here for when the high beams come on. The moment that camera sees anybody, that blue light is gonna turn out. Your high beams have just gone back off. Your headlights will be on the whole time. And that's high beam assist. That is Nissan's safety system. Our next screen over shows me my tire pressure. Once I start to drive, all four wheels will populate here individually. It will always show you what your pressure is. No matter what screen you're on, if you ever get a low tire pressure, it will pop up with a warning that says low tire pressure. It'll show you which wheel 
has a low tire and what the exact pressure is. From there, if you pull in somewhere that's got an air pump, leave your cash kai on. As long as it's on, go to the tire that says it needs air and start putting air in. Once it gets up to the right pressure, your horn will beep once to tell you to stop. If for some reason you went to the wrong tire or kept putting air in, there is an upper limit that it will hit. If it hits the upper limit, it's going to beep your horn three times in a row. Please stop putting air in your tire at that point. We do ask that you start letting some air back out. And again, once it gets back down to the correct pressure, the horn will beep once to tell you to stop. Our next screen over allows you to monitor when you're in front wheel drive versus all wheel drive. So the way this is going to work is pulling away from a dead stop. You're going to be in all wheel drive. This will be a 50 50 split between the front and back. Once you get going, it's going to drop down to front wheel drive, which is what it shows right now. Any traction issues at all because your front wheels are monitored for slippage every hundredth of a second. So if it feels any kind of slippage at all, you'll instantly go back into all wheel drive. You don't need to do anything. It just happens automatically. Now there is a button down here on our dash that says AWD lock that when I push it, I get an icon up here on my dash that says AWD lock. That means that you are locked fully into all wheel drive, 50, 50 split. Once you move, it'll show up there. This only works up to 40 kilometers per hour. So this is a peace of mind thing because it is going to engage all wheel drive as needed up to 140 kilometers an hour. So anywhere in North America that you can legally drive, you have all wheel drive available. If you come out of a grocery store or a doctor's appointment or work or whatever the case may be and you're local, you've got a local drive home, you know the speed is going to be slow. And then once you're going, it's going to remain under 40 kilometers an hour. This will keep you all wheel drive for the entire drive. Our next screen over just allows me to see any warnings. So if I had a warning show up, like my door was not fully shut, I can clear the warning by pressing OK, but it still keeps my triangle over here. When I go back to the warning screen, it will allow me to see what's there. On the warning screen, anything that's there in order to get rid of it, simply correct the issue and it goes away all on its own. My last screen over is my settings and there's a couple things I do want to check and adjust in here. So I'm going to go into driver assistance. I want driving aids. I want to make sure my lane departure warning is on and my blind spot indicator is on. From there, I'm going to come back out. I'm going to go down to meter settings, my main menu. I'm not worried about the home screen. It doesn't really do anything. Average speed, same thing I'm not worried about, but I do want to make sure my trip odometer is on and just about everything else should also be turned on. Chassis control, you can turn on. It will just show you where on the vehicle it's handling any kind of bumps or hard turns. And then we're back to the home screen. So I'm going to back out of here. I'm going into vehicle settings. I want to go down to locking, auto door unlock. I want to set this for shift to park so that the moment I shift into park, it will automatically unlock the vehicle without me having to do anything else. By default, it is set for ignition off. Personal preference, and I know most people prefer shift to park, so this is where you do it. If I come back out of here, I want to go into wipers. I want to make sure that all of these are turned on. It just makes life really easy when you've got your intermittent wipers on or you're putting it in reverse. And if I come down to maintenance, I want to make sure that this is set for 8,000 kilometers. That is your oil change interval. It's every six months or 8,000 kilometers, whichever should hit first. And that's everything that I want to set in here. You are free to play with it. You can't hurt anything. As you can see, there is a factory reset on the button on the bottom. So don't be afraid to play with any of the settings. Now, up here, there is a picture of a steering wheel, and we do have that right here. That works with the adaptive cruise control. That's called Pro Pilot Assist. I can turn it off or back on. Pro Pilot is semi-autonomous steering. It will help steer the vehicle with you. There is a full sequence to go with that. I do have a separate video that goes over all the ins and outs and shows exactly how it works. And I'll put a link to that on this video. Feel free to check it out. I do encourage you to test it. 
It was primarily designed for long drives or late night drives and it is a fantastic uh, feature in those situations. Down below we have a button to turn off the traction control. Now if I do this, it also disables all of my safety features which I can see over here. I don't want to turn off the traction control. I'm in an all-wheel drive vehicle. There's really no need to do that. Heated steering is right down here. That makes my steering wheel toasty warm, especially in the winter. AWD lock we saw. Sport mode is if you're losing your passing lane and want to get ahead of that last car in a hurry. If I turn on sport mode, it shows up under my park indicator down here. Don't be afraid to use it, but don't forget to turn it back off. It is harder on gas. If you're doing a road trip and out on the highway, you definitely want to use eco mode. It will be better on gas again. These are already good on gas, but this will help you that much more. Just be aware that trying to pull away from a dead stop or getting out and ahead of somebody in a hurry while you're in eco mode is going to feel a little bit sluggish. The last thing I want to go over with you is your key fob because there's a few things about it. On the bottom, we have a panic button. Then we have our unlock. We have our lock. You do have remote start. And to work this, you need to press lock, lock, and press and hold your top button for five full seconds. That will remote start your vehicle from up to 200 feet away. From there, once it's running, it will run for up to 10 minutes. When you get in, you do need to put your foot on the brake and you still need to press the start button to engage it. The easiest way to know this is when you get in, your climate control will be off and up here will all be off as well. If you get in, put your foot on the brake and grab your gear shift, it will turn the vehicle off and you'll need to turn it back on. It will run for up to 10 minutes, but if within that time frame, seven or eight minutes in, you know that you're not getting out there before it turns off, you are able to reset that timer back to give you an additional 10 minutes. Simply press lock, lock, and press and hold the top button for five full seconds again. That resets the clock. You can do two remote starts without ever getting in or one remote start with one extension. After that, you do need to get in turn your vehicle on and get up to 30 kilometers an hour in order for that to be able to be used again. If you decide that you're not going anywhere because the weather doesn't look great, simply press and hold the top button for two seconds. It will turn it right back off. Now, because this is a key fob, there is a battery inside and those batteries normally last for two to four years, depending on usage. The very first indication that your battery is getting low in your key fob is you will get in, put your foot on the brake, press the start button, and up top here, it will pop up with a message that says incorrect key ID. If that happens, let it go away. Just try again. It should start. But if you get busy and you just haven't had a chance to change the battery in this, eventually it will die. Should that happen on the back here, there is a little switch that when moved over, there is a key for the driver's side door. Once you are in, there is no key for the start button. So with the key fob, with your foot on the brake, use your key fob to push your start button and it will still start. From there, you're gonna to wanna to get your battery switched out. And to switch it out yourself, all you gotta do is take the key out, get a small flathead screwdriver into one of those two little recessed areas there. That will allow you to give it a twist and pop it open. The battery size is CR2032. It is marked on the inside of the casing as well as on the battery itself. Once you put the new battery in, pop it all back together, put your key back in place, then take it and just give a little push of one of the buttons to see if that flashes. As long as that flashes, your battery is in fine. If it does not, check it back open again. You may have your battery in upside down or you may have a bad battery. But once that's all set, you're all good to go and that will work for another two to four years. Please do not buy the dollar store batteries. I have nothing against the dollar store, but their batteries only tend to last three or four months in these things. You're better off spending the money to get a decent battery or stop into your local Nissan dealership. And for one or two dollars more, they'll switch it all out for you. Congratulations again on your 2023 Nissan Qashqai SV. It's a great little vehicle. It's perfect size for getting into that crossover world. Easy to get in and out of, good on gas, tons of features as we saw. Hope you're enjoying it. And if you still have any questions, please don't hesitate to call, text, email, or stop in at Regan's Nissan at 60 Baker Drive in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. We're going to do what we can to make sure that you're enjoying your vehicle and getting the maximum use out of it. I hope to see you when you're in for your regular service appointments and when it's time for your next vehicle.